What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we are going to be talking about a 2017 F350 and why this little o-ring has caused such a mess. If you guys have an oil leak coming from the top of the engine, you guys might want to watch this video and I want to show you guys how to replace this one little seal so that you have no more oil leak. Alright guys, let's go. guys thanks so much for tuning in uh, this is one of my uh, newer subscribers that actually lives local to me and he has brought it in for an oil leak so I wound up finding it leaking from the injector seal of the number five fuel injector kind of hard to see uh, but you can see the remnants of where the oil has been coagulating around underneath all of this mayhem. So what we're going to do, I have already uh, went in and drained the coolant obviously. Um, I have removed the battery and the degas bottle. Got everything folded up out of my way and I'm trying to get as much clearance to my repair area as I can. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to remove this fuel injector. Um, there are some risks with removing this injector, um, and that would be this hold down bolt. Um, I have had this bolt break uh, off in the cylinder head and requiring much more can of worms kind of repair than what I am uh, actually trying to accomplish. So I'm going to get... Uh, I'm going to get a different camera view here, um, but we're going to start with taking uh, this line off. We're going to be as careful as we can to not damage the return line because we are going to have to reuse that. And we're going to remove the injector connector by, by first popping up this red tab. Probably better suited with a pick. Pop up the red, just like that. And then we're going to hit the button and pull the injector connector off. Just get that thing out of our way. So you can see almost with the connector removed, we're slowly getting more room. But let me get that other camera view and we're gonna get we're gonna get this all torn down. So we're gonna try to get this harness thing out of the way. We just have to pull it off. Gotta rip it off kind of hard. But once we get that out of the way Looks like we have this little thing. Is that going to be in our way? We want to try to get as much play in this return line as we'll be able to, to be possible. Get this clip. We don't want that to drop. Okay. I'm going to go for this bad boy right here. Get this line out of my way. Get it kind of pushed down into this little shadow area. So what I'm going to do is take my pliers and I'm gonna to try to pull up on the middle part while holding the outside, just like that, okay? And then once you have that up, you're gonna to wanna to wiggle that completely off, just like I did. And I'm just gonna kinda of tuck it out of my way, or at least try to. It is gonna be kind of tight. Um, this is the fuel line that is going to our number five fuel injector. So you either can try to finagle a 17 mil wrench in there, or what I use is this Matco tool. I'm sure a lot of you tech guys out there have this, but for those of you that are do, uh, doing this at home yourself, um, you may not. So a 17 mil wrench will suffice. But going to go ahead and pop this line loose off the rail. No, so I can't keep spinning it because it's going to hit the line. So I got to take it off and re-index it. But it's loose enough to where I can finger take it off. And then this one here, I'm going to try to complete the same thing. Okay, I'm going to try not to bust this return line. We're going to be working around this now. 
Okay, you guys actually saw the body of the injector kind of turn there. Okay, I'm gonna put this over here. I don't like starting here, because if it comes flying off, it might be, be, might have a situation where you hit the return line, and that's definitely a no-no. Okay, line is all the way loose. We're just gonna twist that off. We don't uh, have any fuel pressure in this. This thing has been sitting for days. Uh, over the weekend this is a warranty repair so take note of uh, keeping all of your your parts because we will have to turn those back in so the next thing is going to be the fuel injector itself uh, the hold down bolt and that is going to be a t47 and I'm gonna see if I can finagle my t47 in there it looks like this line might be kind of in the way all right put that in there behind the line you guys can see how the lines kind of in the way we're not gonna loosen that or get that out of our way hand tools for this remember I was saying this can break off but we have completely gotten it loose and I'm just gonna use finger power to remove this bolt all the way there we go I have better lighting now you guys have probably asked yourself, well, how do you get the injector out, uh, pulling it or using this other method that us fellow technicians use, but sometimes it's a little harder, and especially in this situation, because there is no room and plus the fuel rail is in the way. So what you can do if you want to take the injector out, the injector hold down sits like this. If you flip the injector hold down upside down and put it here and then use a hammer, this actually acts as like a little fulcrum and will pull this out. But for demonstration purposes, I am going to use something else and this is going to be the Pro Max Power Puller and it has a little slide hammer on it and it totally does not affect the durability of the fuel injector. Um, I have a video of this that I will link in the description uh, showing how to use it with an engine that was not in a truck. But for this uh, particular case, I'm gonna use it for this uh, to remove the injector and get down to the root cause of this problem. All right, so this is the Pro Max power pole and you guys can reach out to them to pick up this particular special tool. Definitely a, a, a must have for those of you that uh, have broken fasteners or uh, just weird scenarios such as this that I wanna show you guys. So we have a couple pieces of the tool. I'm gonna thread that all the way on. Threaded nut. Just gonna use finger, finger power to screw that on all the way to where the fuel line attaches to the injector and I'm literally gonna slide hammer this out I'm not doing it that hard we'll see how stuck this injector is okay I'm not doing it hard just gingerly you can see the injector is coming right up now what I've had happen before is sometimes the fuel injector compression copper gasket likes to fall down in the bore so be careful or try to keep it on the injector Whew. luckily this one stayed so we don't have to go fishing it's not loose either sometimes I find them real loose and just uh, flopping off but here's the injector okay you can see the oil has been coming up out of here it's supposed to stop right here and keep this in the valve cover area this is the the injector well if you want to call it or the injector cup so to speak um, so we don't want oil from our rocker box getting down into the injector because remember this seals compression not fluids and then um, our oil seal here to here so our rocker area that the injector sticks up in the under the valve cover is going to be you know completely getting splashed with this so our failed seal failed seal is right here let's get a better 
better lightage. If you guys can see that better. Oh, there we go, it's way better. Okay, so I got a couple of ways you can do this. Um, you either can get a pick, and the pick, it, it can be kind of a pain to do. Um, what I have used in the past has been my trim tool, and I've just stuck the foot in here like this, I'm going underneath this line. I'm going to twist it around, and I'm going to pry on the edge of the seal, right, right there, okay? It just pops right out. You guys can see it's stuck to the foot of my trim tool. So if you got something similar or almost as wide as that hole, when you come around the back side, you're going to just try to get under that lip to pop that out of its So I just actually went and talked to another co-worker to see what his method was, because I know you guys won't have this at home. Um, he has taken a flat blade screwdriver and kind of did the same thing I did, but try to get this inside lip and was able to you know pop it out of its out of its bore so really to install it all you're gonna really need to do is I'm just gonna make sure this pole is clean I'm gonna wipe the inside perimeter taking care of not breaking this return line it looks pretty good let's give it a give it a wipe so the new one I'm gonna apply uh, a little oil um, actually, you know what I'll do instead of the oil, I'm going to put a little trans gel on here. I know some of you guys like to use the red one or the clear one, but I don't do a whole lot of trans work, so I'm rocking the red. I'm going to put that on, and then it's pretty much just going to set it over the hole. Sometimes I've been able to press it in with my fingers. Um, other times I've had to put a 22 mil socket on it. You can see you get one side down and the other side pops up. Almost had it with my fingers, but let's see. I'm gonna get a 22 milli. Get a 22 milli, half inch. Okay, I'm gonna have to put an extension on that. Okay, get it nice and flush. Tap, tap, tap a roo. I like it. One more tap, tap, tap a -roo. And you guys can see that this new injector seal to valve cover is completely replaced. Totally flushly mounted. Looks very nice. It's dry. The next thing I want to show you guys is the injector seal kit that you're going to need. So you cannot just put the injector back in. You're going to have to reseal that. And that is what we're going to do right now. All right, guys. So... The first off, I should have told you in the very beginning, the part number you're going to need for that seal. The part number for the injector seal kit is this, and it's going to come with the specific line you need because there are two different kits. There are four of these kits and four other kits. One kit is for four injectors like this, and the other kit is for the other injectors that have the curve in it. So the other thing you're gonna get as well as the line is a new bolt, one-time use, do not reuse this. And then you're gonna get the three seals. I'm gonna put a link to uh, in the description for the other um, injector seal video that I have replaced these on. It was a 650, 750. But this is how I remove the copper washer. I get my pick. I'm just going to pick all this stuff away. All around that little valley in there. Then I have this scotch Bright pad. I'm going to spray it down with a little spray clean. I'm going to totally clean this tip off. This is how I do all of the fuel injectors. I've never had a problem with them. Huey, high pressure, fuel, doesn't matter. Tip totally clean. Gonna go ahead and remove this orange o ring, taking note that it was in this groove, not this groove, this groove. 
And then lastly, this little tiny guy is our return line O-ring. And this is going to come off just like that. Once all that's off, I'm going to get a clean rag. I'm going to wipe this injector all the way down. Get it all nice and clean for the guy. Put it back in his truck. We'll decrease this whole engine compartment once we're done. Okay, we got our new O-rings. Okay, we're going to put on our return line O-ring first. Okay, she's on. We've got our new orange O-ring. Okay, we gotta get all the way down. Rolling it over. And into its final groove. Okay. And the last thing is to get this on here. But you see how now loose that is? What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put some of that trans gel. And I'm going to have to glue it onto here. And then this will just dissolve uh, after being installed. So we're going to need to put a little goop on there. And then we're going to install the injector back into the truck. All right, I got the copper washer gasket on the tip of the injector, and you guys can see I don't have it all snotty with uh, lubricant or the trans gel to try to keep that, that washer on there, but you can see it's not flopping around like it, like it was. So I have put just a little bit of trans gel on here. These are uh, supposed to be uh, installed dry, but I'm not gonna put two rubber components uh, dry uh, sliding next to each other so I'm just lubricating uh, just a little bit and when I install it I'm giving a little twist to pop it through its first seal section and then I'm going to rotate the injector back around to its original location gonna push it in all the way okay the injector is completely seated I am going to reuse the original hold down but you need to put some oil on that part where that bolt head is going to sit. Updated bolt, no more torques, we're working with the 10 milli. So in order to get this thing in here, what I like to do is I'll put this like this and try to work these both in at the same time. Okay, see how I kind of did that, I got to get this thing twisted back around. Okay, get it, get it on the other side of the injector, come on. There we go. And I just work it right into its injector hold down hole. And if you guys are gonna be questioning, um, if you come up here a little bit more, if you see this indentation right here in the valve cover, that, that indentation right there, that is where the injector return port is supposed to be. So if you guys are like, oh, which way do I go? Make sure to have that return port in that indentation of the valve cover. So once you get that screwed in, we're going to draw it down with electrics, 10 milli. Ooh, tightening. Okay, this is supposed to be 22 foot pounds, so I am setting the torque wrench right now. 10 milli. Okay, set this torque wrench. We got 22 footies, we got the 10 milli. Okay. Okay, there's 22. Okay, I got this extension. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a couple more. Make sure we're torqued so that is 22 foot pounds the last step is we have to do an additional 90 degrees and I'm going to show you guys how to do that all right so get you guys a sharpie or what I'm going to use is a paint marker so if we had to go 90 degrees everybody which way is that line going to be facing it's going to be facing up and down so I got a longer extension so I can get more swinging room so we're going to do our 90 degrees so an old guy told me once that if I 
hold my ratchet here and when I'm done I put my ratchet here that's 90 degrees so you can do one of two things if you have enough sense to use your turning device as your your gauge so you know this would be starting point this would be 90 degrees then you have achieved the same thing that I was trying to show you guys with the line so two different ways you can do it use your sharpie use your noodle a little more and you can see we're up and down so we have a finally achieved our final torque for the fuel injector and we're gonna pop on all the stuff that we removed all right so the next thing we're gonna do before we put this return line on because that is our most delicate thing is the big flare nut always goes on to the injector the other part goes on to the rail you just want to start them equally get this thing seated there we go screw this all the way down by hand these do have a torque spec I don't remember the torque spec because for me this tightening procedure it's all done by feel I tighten it until I feel being tight and you guys may not agree with it but for those techs out there you're gonna know exactly what I am talking about I'm gonna repeat that sequence on both lines both fittings I'm gonna give this one just a smidge more and I'm gonna give this one its final boom okay lines on you're gonna go ahead and clip that back on you're gonna go ahead with your injector return line and you're going to push that, engaging the first clip, the second clip, and the return line is now on. Don't forget about your fuel injector connector. Just like this. Pop this guy on, and then you're going to slide that red tab down, engaging the lock. That, my friends, is how you take care of this oil leak from your valve cover on your 6.7. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. If anybody's ever had replaced this seal, was it number five, was it number six, was it in the back on number four? Sometimes they can be easy, and sometimes they can be a pain in the butt. Nevertheless, this is on my favorite engine, the 6.7. I wanna keep these things on the road, show you guys how to take care of them, and how to replace this simple gasket, which could cripple you if you're leaking oil and you don't want to be leaking oil. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Let me know if anybody's had to replace this. Let me know. You want to get on the podcast and talk trucks? Drop through my email and let me know, and I'll get you guys in queue. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, sub, share, and I'll see you guys all next time. See you.